Let's just say I am so fucking glad I gave up on Marvelous as soon as it became obvious that they'd rather stick with Sony than their paying customers. But new news just came out. Marvelous enters into capital and business alliance with Tencent subsidiary. Tencent purchases 20% stake in Marvelous. Now, are you, I keep seeing all these morons out there. Oh, but 20% isn't that much. It, dude, that's one-fifth of the company. One-fifth of the decisions being made at Marvelous are pretty much Tencent right now. And I'm willing to bet that the others are probably going to be friendly to them. Marvelous has entered into a capital and business alliance with uh, Image Frame Investment Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of Chinese conglomerate Tencent Holdings, the company announced. Image Frame Investment will spend about 7 billion yen to buy a 20% stake in the company. Marvelous will use the funding to develop its existing IP, such as Story of Seasons, into stronger brands, as well as launch new properties such as Demon X Machina at a global level over the next three years. No mention of Senren Kagura anymore. I wonder why. This didn't affect me that much because I've already written Marvelous off as dead, after, given how they reacted to Soiny censoring them. Other companies have been jumping ship. I mean, look at what D3 Publisher did. Look at what they did with Omega Labyrinth Life. Soiny decided to fuck them over and censor them, and they just said, oh, okay, fine. We're going to release the real version of the game on Switch and a censored version for PlayStation, and we're literally going to turn them into a joke. If that's how Marvelous had responded, I would view this as a tragedy right now. But Marvelous I'd already written off as dead. So yeah, we got people like uh, Pawfeather right here asking, RG, how about Blade Devil Peach Beat Splash? I'm looking into it, man. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could get in contact with Tamsoft, though? Because Tamsoft is the development studio that did pretty much all the actual work on this, uh, the 3D Senran Kagura games. If I could get in touch with Tamsoft, maybe we could make it make a game that even feels like the real thing. That would be freaking great right there. Now, unfortunately, since I work as a software developer at my day job, even though gaming is in a completely different industry than the one I'm in, I do not want to give my uh, current employer even the slightest reason to legally come after me when I quit. Like, oh, since you were coding for uh, yourself while you were employed with us, we own that. Now, there's a probably 0.0001% chance of that happening because even if uh, if I left and it was not a uh, it was not an amicable breakup, they'd probably want nothing. They wouldn't want to be associated with my brand or any of the other stuff I do anyway. But just in case. But uh, once, dude, once we verify that Blade Devil is a brand that's here to stay. So when the second campaign launches, if it does anywhere near the level of the first one, that's going to be the sign right there that. Here we go. We can uh, we can safely move forward with this. Then I'll be able to start working on the games. Yeah, but uh, marvelous. I I'd written them off as dead long before ten cent bottom. So this this didn't really even affect me much. So this is not the first time Marvelous has entered into a business agreement with Tencent. In March of current year, minus one, Marvelous licensed the Story of Seasons property to Tencent to develop a smartphone game based on the franchise. Yeah, that's different. I, I'm that. That's just a regular. Like you know, we don't normally do these mobile games, so we'll let you do it instead. That is fine. Yeah, according to Tencent, the company is usually not the direct investor in these matters, since uh, Image Frame Investment is a wholly owned subsidiary of Tencent as well as an investment holding company. It was decided that Image Frame would hold the purchase shares. Thus, while Image Frame Investment is the uh, contract partner in this capital and business alliance, the Tencent Group company may become the actual business partner in the future following negotiations between Tencent and Marvelous. And it's only a matter of time at this rate before they own 100% of the company. That's what happened with Riot, I believe. Yeah, I think Riot Games and Tencent had a, a percent of Riot at first, and then they outright bought them. So Marvelous, at this point, one of two things is going to happen. If Marvelous ends up making a shitload of money, Tencent is probably going to buy them outright. If Marvelous doesn't make Tencent the money they want to see, then they're probably just going to let him go broke, I guess. This is where we are with this shit. 
Now, I would have cared. God, I was so hyped to see the final ending of the Senran Kagura storyline. And then Soiny fucked it up. And then Marvelous decided, like, ah, forget. Okay, let's actually talk about Marvelous for a little bit. So, um, Kandagawa Jet Girls is actually coming to the PC in this summer here in the West. They're trying to claim that, like, oh, well, this game was always meant to be like some new IP that always meets Sony's censorship standards. So we tech, we didn't actually remove anything. So there's nothing to add back into the PC release. And I just call bullshit on that. Because look at the anime. The anime version of Kandagawa Jet Girls is clearly what they had in mind for the game. A lot more fan service. And then they turn around and say, oh, none of that stuff was ever meant to be in the game. Oh, so, so the anime is false advertisement then? I don't know. I'm, I'm not buying that shit. Nope, I'm not fucking buying it. I think that uh, that Soiny probably came up to him and said, you better not tell them that we forced you to censor this game and destroy this property. So I'm at this point, I was saying before that uh, if the PC version ends up being the same as the censored piss poor version, then I'm, I'm not even, I'm might buy it at a discount, like maybe once it's five bucks on sale. Yeah, I don't know if I'll buy it at all, though. Maybe if the modders actually turn it into a proper game, I'll consider it. But at this point, I'm just like, fuck this entire industry. Oh, yeah, no, Paw Feather. See, good fucking point right there. Good fucking point. Saying that the Jet Girls gameplay seems too slow for a racer. That's exactly what I thought, too, when I saw the first gameplay reveal. Now, I, I think they slowed it down because of how they implemented the shooting and aiming mechanics. But I want my racing games to be fast. Now, if I want a good water-based racing game, I will, be, I will go back to Riptide GP2 and Riptide Renegade. Those are great fucking games right there. Made by a Western company, by the way, with like really no fan service in them. Just great fucking racing mechanics. Which is why I said, wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if I could take, you know, like just take the gameplay mechanics of something like Riptide GP, slap some fan service big t big titty anime girls on them instead, just give it a nice new fresh coat of paint, maybe add some uh, like Mario Kart style like weapons and shooting mechanics to it, keep that sense of speed going. If we could just upstage Marvelous in every fucking way, dude, that I, I could probably die happy if I if I ever managed to pull that off. Like, yeah, you know what? It's not just the fan service. How about we create a game that not only has better fan service, but also better gameplay and is cheaper than yours? Oh my god. Yeah, I'd be able to die happy if I was able to do that. Remember those good old days where you could fucking play a demo for more time than it takes to finish a AAA game in current year? You guys remember that? We're going to have to bring that back. Just bring back good fucking game. No microtransactions or any of that shit. Yeah. See, this is the, the mainstream AAA industry. They cry all the time that, oh, well, if we don't do microtransactions and loot boxes, like, oh, we got to pay our bills. Meanwhile, Mojang with Minecraft and Relogic with Terraria have been releasing free updates for a game you only pay for one fucking time for years. And they somehow have no fucking problems making money. Maybe the AAA industry is doing something wrong. Just a thought. Just a little conspiracy theory there. Wouldn't be a fucking problem if they didn't. I mean, I ranted about this last week where, yeah, the, the issue is they these companies have formed just blatantly adversarial relationships with their own customer. Now, you don't fucking do that. Like, if you're going to be forming an adversarial relationship with your customers, of course you're going to fucking lose money, dipshit. 
Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.